Hello, Michigan fans, and welcome to the Wolverine 24-7 Weekend Wrap-Up. I'm your host, Zach Shaw, and the goal of this show is while we write a lot of stories about Michigan football, you might not have time to read all of them. So our hope is that this shorter video uh, with a lot of quick hitters will give you something to know and some key notes as you head into work or school during the week. Once you get the hang of it, the format of this show will actually be quite simple. We go a 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 countdown. And so first we start with six numbers to know, then we have our top five GIFs of the week, then we take four hail mail questions from our dedicated readers, then we have three sizzling hot takes from yours truly, Zach Shaw, we have two MVPs from the weekend, and then we have one bold prediction for next week. We will begin our countdown with the six. Six key numbers to know. Number one, 60. The number of points Michigan beat Hawaii by. Though Hawaii came to Michigan, Michigan looked like they were taking a trip to Hawaii based on how easily they breezed through the Rainbow Warriors. The 60-point victory was Michigan's largest margin of victory since 1975. In 41 years, no one had beaten a team more handily. Our next number is 112, and that was the number of yards true freshman Chris Evans rushed for on eight carries in his collegiate debut Saturday. It was the most rushing yards by a true freshman running back making his debut in the history of Michigan football. Our next number is eight, which is the number of tackles for loss Michigan's three starting linebackers combined for in Saturday's game. Despite being a completely new unit in starting, it seems like Don Dr. Blitz Brown, Michigan's new defensive coordinator, has been able to find a use for the linebackers. The unit largely disappointed last season despite having all seniors. This year, the whole new crop, including Jabril Peppers, Ben Gideon, and Mike McRae, the unit was among the stars of Michigan's star-studded defense. Our next number is zero. That is the number of times Michigan had to punt in this game, just the fourth time in school history that it was able to pull off such a feat. We did find out who Michigan's starting quarterback was. We still don't technically know who Michigan's punter is. Our next number is 12, which is the amount of points Michigan's defense was responsible for on Saturday, more than quadrupling Hawaii's total score. Delano Hill and Channing Stribling each had interceptions returned for touchdowns, just the fourth time that Michigan has had two pick sixes in one game. Our final number is 1, which is the number of weeks Michigan has played and also the number of Michigan defenders that have won Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week honors. Mike McRae, linebacker, we just mentioned him about 25 seconds ago, took the honors in his first career start, totaling three and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, and a forced fumble. Cruising for a bruising we go as we head to our next segment, and it's the top five GIFs of the week. Number five, Jim Harbaugh pumping up Wilton Spate, as we mentioned. We learned that Spate is the starting quarterback, and Jim Harbaugh is more than happy to get him pumped up. Reasons why I love this GIF. Number one, it's weird. Try doing this to your friends before they go to work or before they have a test or before they go on a date. It will not work. They will not appreciate it as much as Wilton Spade appreciates Jim Harbaugh. Reason number two why I love this GIF is that Jim Harbaugh loves it so much. You can see him bubbling with joy. Meanwhile, Wilton Spade seems like he's just been dealing with this for years and years and is, is, is dog tired of it. Of course, he brought a lot of energy to the game, so it must have paid off. Number four, Delano Hill with his pick six. Channing Stribling also had one, as we mentioned. That one was also pretty, but this one, I love it because you can tell he is crouched. He is almost hiding behind the offensive line, and then, whoop, I'll say that noise again, whoop, he picks it off and takes it to his house. First career interception and first career touchdown. Number three, Jake Butt wedges it in. This All-American tight end has a knack for fitting into tight spaces. He gets a catch from Spate and scrambles 19 yards He's actually able to make this dive just over four yards of a dive, and it lands in the exact right spot in the pylon for Michigan's second touchdown of the game. Number two, Chris Evans takes it to the house. Now, he was very much helped by this offensive line, giving him a huge hole as the second half got underway. But Evans showcasing speed that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, Maybe Denard, uh, maybe Devin Gardner, maybe Fitz Toussaint in 2011 but Chris Evans able to make it happen going untouched for 43 yards and the score and our number one gif of the week comes to a guy that will probably be on this list throughout the season Jabril Peppers taking a punt return early in the game 
and he shows a lot of horizontal speed and some lateral movement and then the last second even though he's already stepped out of bounds shows a lot of vertical poise as he leaps over hawaii's punter his reasoning after the game was that he did not want to be tackled by a punter and even though it did not count it certainly counts in our top five gifs of the week moving on to our four section we have four hail mail questions from our beloved wolverine 24 7 readers of course if you want to become one of those hail mail question askers all you have to do is go to michigan.247sports.com and find yourself a subscription become a vip member and you'll be able to submit questions after every game on saturday our first question comes from one of our moderators ducksworth who asks is chris evans going to win the heisman this year or next year or both and i'm thinking it's going to be tough this year uh 112 yards and two touchdowns actually probably won't win you the Heisman as a running back. You can look at guys like Christian McCaffrey and others who have put up very valiant efforts and still come away without the Heisman. However, I do think next year when he becomes wide receiver, running back, kick returner, punt returner, and Michigan's Wildcat quarterback, I think you'll see him win the Heisman unanimously. Next up, we have Inuyesta who asks us, how many of our remaining games will we win by 60? I'm thinking 10 but willing to listen to arguments that it will be all 11. And Inuyesta, I think the answer to this question very much depends on how many coaches continue to want to piss Jim Harbaugh off. Nick Rolovich, first-time head coach and first-year head coach at Hawaii, made some waves earlier this week when he suggested that Michigan's coach Jim Harbaugh denied Hawaii's request to send practice scrimmage tape uh, over to help Hawaii prepare for the game. A couple days later, he said he was joking, And a couple days after that, Harbaugh runs up the score like no one at Michigan has in 41 years. I don't think that's a coincidence, and I don't think other coaches would be wise to continue infuriating Harbaugh. If Rocky Top colleague or Georgia coach were on the schedule in Iesta, I would say that they could win a few more. But right now, I think Harbaugh's main focus is making sure that he wins every game and not worrying too much about the margin of victory. Our next question is a twofer, and that is not the character from 30 Rock. It's just two questions. It comes from Billy Goat, who asks, which freshman played that you didn't expect to? Billy Goat also asks, were you surprised O'Korn didn't get more snaps once it became clear Spate was done for the day? So we'll get to where your first question, which freshman played that you didn't expect to? Uh, there's about a dozen of them. Michigan played 17 true freshmen, uh, setting a school record. The previous record was 10, so at least seven surprised me. I was expecting uh, about six to eight freshmen to see this game. Given that it was a blowout, you could probably add a few more to that, but I was very surprised that they rolled out so many freshmen. More than half of Jim Harbaugh's freshman class, his first recruiting class, saw the field in the first game. As to your next question, I am tempted to be surprised. This is venturing into speculation, as Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh has been notoriously tight-lipped about the quarterback battle, but we have heard rumblings that Spate won that quarterback battle by no small margin, and that the actual battle was between O'Korn and Morris for that second spot. And if that's the case, then it actually makes a lot of sense that O'Korn and Morris had similar amounts of snaps and played a similar amount in, in Michigan's home opener. However, if that is not the case, then yes, I am a little surprised O'Korn got so few snaps given that this battle was allegedly all the way up until the final week. Our final question comes from Mish Mania, who asks, would Ben Bradison started if didn't have a minor injury. And I'm going to go ahead and go and get this out there. Ben Bradison had no reports of an injury. There was nothing to be said in that regard. However, Ben Braden did have a minor injury and was forced to sit in the game while Patrick Kugler and then later Ben Bradison took his spot at left guard. I do think Ben Braden starts not only if there wasn't a minor injury, but also if it was a team that wasn't Hawaii. Jim Harbaugh mentioned Ben Braden alongside Jordan Lewis as two guys who probably could have played, but were chosen not to, and speculation abound can lead us to believe that that was because Michigan was the 41 and a half point favorite over the Rainbow Warriors. So just to recap, Ben Bradison did play and did well. Ben Braden is expected to be back this following week. I cannot, however, provide any information on Ben Bradison and Ben Bradinson. Our next segment is my three hot takes. So get your fire emojis ready. Number one, this freshman class will go down as the greatest class in the history of Michigan football. Obviously, they've played more than anyone at this point in any freshman class in the history of Michigan football. 
And I also think it's a very talented group. The fact that Chris Evans already looks like one of Michigan's best running backs in the last five years, and the fact that Rashawn Gary is the nation's number one recruit, I think you're going to look at this team 20 years from now and see it as one of the best, even though coming out of high school is only the fifth best recruiting class in the country. Your number two sizzling hot take, I am on fire, Mike McRae will be all Big Ten. He got off to a good start by winning Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week, but I think that Don Brown's defense is just linebacker heavy enough, sending him into the backfield a lot. He will receive plenty of postseason honors at the end of this season. I think he's got a lot of talent. He showcased a lot of growth, and we're talking about a guy that has missed the 2013 and 2015 seasons in large part due to injury, barely played in 2014, uh, has been through everything, but has also seen a lot and taken notes from other linebackers, and I think he's ready to be Michigan's next great linebacker. Your third and final hot take from me from this weekend is that Michigan's defensive backs just needed Jordan Lewis to get injured to show how great they were. Jordan Lewis not going to be injured for long. It sounds like it was just a minor tweak and that he will be back next week. Sat out Saturday's game, but Michigan's defensive backs, very senior heavy group, never skipped a beat between Delano Hill, Channing Stribling, Diamante Thomas, and Jeremy Clark. Sands Lewis actually outperformed what they did for much of last season. Two interceptions returned for touchdown, plenty of pass breakups, even a couple tackles for loss from that secondary. All-American Jordan Lewis, who needs him? Getting close to the finish here, now we have two MVPs from the weekend. They're probably pretty obvious at this point, but number one, Chris Evans, the true freshman running back. Best debut by a running back in Michigan program history. Showcased a lot, and he was clearly the best player on Michigan's offense. He had the longest play of the game at 43 yards. Uh, also, our number two GIF of the week, if you have, if you have already forgotten. Uh, but Chris Evans showcased a lot, a lot of speed, had some great cuts, and found the end zone twice. Hats off to him. He's our first MVP. Our second MVP is on the defensive side of the ball. He's also been mentioned a lot in this video already. Mike McRae, the linebacker, won Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Well-deserved honor. We've already mentioned his stats, but hats off to him. He is our second MVP of this video. And our final segment of the night, as a bit of a reward for having you stick through the first 20 segments, our 21st is the one bold prediction moving forward and that is that Chris Evans will become the starting running back by Big Ten play. If you were playing a drinking game as to taking a shot every time I mentioned Chris Evans' name in this video, you would be passed out on the floor at this point, and for good reason. He really, really looks good. If you couldn't see it from the game, uh, his speed is better than that of just about any running back that Michigan has shown so far, unless there's people on the bench that we haven't seen yet, and he has a really nice job, where and whereas other running backs like to break tackles and go up the line and maybe lack a little vision. He loves the daylight. He's able to find some open field and make things happen. I think that's going to bring him up the depth chart, and I think by the time Michigan plays Penn State in just a couple weeks, he will be the go-to back. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy your work week. Uh, be sure to read our content all week, michigan.247sports.com. This has been the Wolverine 24-7 Weekend Wrap-Up. I'm Zach Shaw, and we'll see you next time.